me to basically like just do anything um, now, just about. Uh, and in fact, I guess what we should do right now is just do a bunch of examples. Let's do that. John. Okay, so we're gonna have like 15 minutes of just like chill, just do the problems. Camera. So you know, do them carefully. Compare with the person next to you after you're done, and we'll put them on the board and all that kind of stuff. So here we go. Or should we, maybe we should do one together. I think we should do at least one together. Um, should we do the problem that? Uh, should we do the problems that motivated us to begin with? Um, so like sine of x cubed. How do I do that now? I would like to know what the derivative. <laughs> What's up? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what is the derivative of what is the derivative of sine of x cubed? Um, well, if we're being really careful about this, we would say, okay, what is sine of x cubed? It's kind of like the outer function is sine and the inner function is x cubed, right? So it's kind of like that's f and that's g. And the chain rule says that when you differentiate f of g of something, it's the derivative of g. Well, I guess we'll just do it the normal way. It's the, it's the derivative of f, which is cosine. cosine, evaluated at g, so it's cosine of x cubed, times g prime, which is 3x squared, bam. Cool? One more. Um, what is the derivative of e to the cosine x. <clears throat> well now the outer function is e to the x and the inner function is cosine. So what is the derivative of um, e to the something? E to the something. So this is just e cosine x and then times the derivative of cosine and it's like it's like recursive, right? All right. So I'm going to give you a bunch of these problems, and then you can just start. So Do one of these together? Oh, we have to like use the triple one. Yeah, whoa, you're all over there? Did everyone do number one already? Yeah, Okay, so, no? Um, so, what I think is really helpful is to rewrite your function in a derivative friendly form. So, in this case, 
uh, even though it looks kind of fine as it is, I would first, I always do this, even now, and I'm an expert, is they rewrite the function as x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. That makes it explicit that the inner function is x squared plus 1 and the outer function is something to the 1 half. Cool? Pretty cool? Okay, and now when it comes to differentiating, I can apply the chain rule in a nice fashion. What is the derivative of something to the 1 half? The derivative of something to the 1 half is 1, two. <coughs> one half one. something yeah. to the negative 1 half and then times and now what we do is we go back inside to take the derivative of the inner function and that is <coughs> 2x. Okay, I have this teacher, have I got told you about, have I told you guys about my high school experience? No. I'm a, oh, this is cool that's going to be on video. Um, I hate this guy. I had this, um, uh, first of all, okay, I'm trying to keep the story short, but, um, but first of all, um, it's just ridiculous that I became a teacher because I was the worst student in high school, and, no, Griffin, you're more or less fine. I was like a jerk. I was just no, like a huge jerk. No, like, you're a teacher, though. Oh, wait, what? Because you're a teacher. I don't know, it just happens. Sometimes life just happens. Um, so, um, I was really mean to all my teachers, mostly because they deserved it, but probably not because they're human beings, I should have been nicer. But anyway, um, but, um, this one particular guy was also a jerk, so he probably deserved it. His name was Mr. Garlic. He, he, was, uh, um, he, was, um, he was this guy, um, he was, so he, my senior year I took, um, I took uh, calculus, and um, actually this, this is part of a longer story, so I, I'll give the abridged version. Basically, the class was kind of a joke. He was like not that good. My high school was like not that good. The students were not that good. The teacher was not that good. The class was not good. I was very good at math. I easily got A's on everything. Um, but also I like didn't really learn because it was just sort of like it wasn't taught well. There was very little theory. There was a lot of like, practice problems, which was kind of nice. But anyway, he was mean. He was really, really mean. And um, he would um, he uh, he generally just thought that basically there were too many people in the class. It was just like AP Calc. They were like. I don't know, 30 people in the class or something like that, and he was just all like Mr. Tough Guy. He was kind of like one of these teachers who thought he was really cool. He was like really good looking. I think he married one of his former students. What? Um, oh. And, uh, and uh, he would just always just be really like mean to everyone all the time, like aggressively. Like he would just say, you need to drop this class. They say, anytime anyone had any problem, you need to drop this class. Kind of like a, little, like a white fam a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, anyway, um, I basically, um, I basically uh, hated him, and, and I liked the class because I liked calculus. But um, I mostly thought he was, um, he was a bad teacher. But he had a couple of really good things. And so I have retained to this very day many of the things which I learned from him, including the chain rule. And what he would do every time he did the chain rule, and I've been doing it ever since, and now you will all do it, is every time that he would go uh, to complete the chain rule, it's like the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function, he would shout out, back inside. Because you have to go back inside to take the derivative of the inner function. So like over here, for example, what's the derivative of cosine 3x? Well, the derivative of cosine of something is negative sine something back inside for the derivative of the 3x. When you go back inside, it reminds you that you always have to do the chain rule. You need to go back inside and take the derivative of the inner function. Get it? So you should just do that while you're doing your homework uh, in your room. You should just be shouting out loud to yourself, back inside, back inside. So here, let's see this one, for example. Pretty, did you do this one yet? What? You're in the middle of it. Okay, perfect. So what's the derivative of something to the fourth? Something cubed back inside for the derivative of the inside function, which is? Yeah, cool. All right, keep working on these. Some of you might be like, already done. Almost. And then um, it is customary to put on some chain rule theme songs in the background, even though I think YouTube is going to get mad at me. What? Do we need to uh, do the whole pillow talk thing? Oh, yeah, we definitely should do some pillow talk. I forgot about that. Yeah, one half cancels with the two. Um, and then what we end up with is x over root x squared plus one. Yeah, good. For number three, do we have to do it? There's really not much to do here, so uh, can I just leave? You can like. No, 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 no! Don't expand it out. That's terrible. All right, let's see. Um, okay, I don't have any. It's gonna be dependent on what I have. I thought I had. Is it 
this is the expanded one with a bunch of And now for the original, there's the Beatles pretty much stole all of their sound. Wow. Okay. Unknown R&B artist who got like no money. <laughs>
I didn't do the plan, but I did it. All right, six is kind of hard, right? Because first, yeah. First, I will rewrite this as cosine six x to the one third. But now, you need to think of it as an inner function and an outer function. The chain rule is recursive, right? So, right, so what is the, you have to think about it this way. What is the derivative of something to the one third? Well, the derivative of something to the one third is one third something to the negative two thirds. Back inside for the derivative of the something. Is that what you with me? That's not a little bit, I'm scared. Um, back inside for the derivative of cosine six x. So the chain rule makes complete sense. It just so happens in this particular case that when I do the back inside step, I also need to use the chain rule. You see what I mean by saying it's recursive? Okay, so yeah. Again, the derivative of something to the one-third is one-third something to the negative two-thirds back inside for the derivative of the something. And what is the derivative of cosine six x? Well, that requires the chain rule. The derivative of cosine six, the derivative of cosine of something is negative sine something back inside for the derivative of the something, which is six. The reason why it's called the chain rule is because it kind of like you chain them all together, basically, into like a long thing. Uh, and now I just multiply all of these. So we get negative 2 sine 6x over um, and we usually just like leave it like that. Did I do that right? Yo. Am I missing a negative? Yeah, it's negative. No, it's not. Derivative of secant, secant 10. Now's the time to start knowing those. Yeah, grab and flip on the back and do a quick re-derivation of the derivative of secant. Uh, are you guys basically done? Are you just waiting for me? Okay. Back inside, the derivative of the ln x, which is the 1 over x, we proved that last class. So this is 1 over 2x ln x. Great. Here I will take a moment to rewrite this in a form which makes it obvious. That, what's up? It's not possible. Oh, crap. Better now? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So this is 5 sine x to the fourth, back inside, cosine. Um, so if you want to write it like the normal way. This is the last good song, man. Uh, they all get kind of weird. Okay, this one is also like a triple, right? This gets complicated. Because even though even though we put the two here, the two here, we really mean sine of x cubed squared, right? So I think it's a really good idea to take a moment and rewrite the function like this in a derivative friendly form. Now when we differentiate, am I ahead of most of you or behind most of you? Alright, whatever. Just keep going. So what is the derivative of something squared? The derivative of something squared is 2 something to the 1 back inside for the derivative of the something. And the derivative of sine of x cubed just so happens requires a further application of the chain rule. So what is the derivative of sine of x cubed? It's the derivative of sine of something is cosine x cubed back inside 3x squared. Follow, follow? Okay, so if we make it pretty, it's just 6x uh, squared. I guess you could, you could do a trig identity here if you really wanted to, but I don't feel like it. Alright, last one. How do I do this? Product rule with chain rules on the inside, right? Unfortunately, there's no cooler way to do it. So yeah, derivative of the first, 
5, 2x plus 1 to the 4th, back inside 2, times the 2nd, plus the 1st, times the derivative of the 2nd, cubed, back inside, 3x squared minus 1, Crap, kind of ran out of space. All right, and then there's like some pillow talk we got to hear about, I don't feel like right now. All right. Um, Good, what do we got left, like 10 minutes? Yeah. Perfect. Um, all right, more math. More math, more math. Suddenly, with the chain rule, everything is now open to us. In particular, I can now do a, remember how I told you that there was a wishy-washy proof of e to the x? Remember how I told you this? And now I told you that we could clean it up and we could make it a little bit tighter. And the way we do this is something called um, implicit differentiation. Um, and basically, it goes like this. Ready? So here's my goal. My goal is I want to know what this is, right? So here's what I do. I say, OK, well, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as y equals e to the x. Yeah? So yeah. Okay. And then, goal two is I'm going to write down dy dx as like the thing that I see. Okay? Um, so y is e to the x, and I want to know what dy dx is. Okay. So now, what I do is I am going to use the fact that I already know. So here's what I know, because we proved this one exactly without any wishy washiness um, that the derivative of ln x was 1 over x. And so really what I'm outlining to you now is a general procedure for taking the derivative of the inverse of a function if I know the derivative of a function. So I know this and I want to derive this. Let's so suppose we had never seen this before, right? This is how you would do this. Okay, so y is e to the x. Well, there's a relationship. If y is e to the x, then what's another relationship between x and y? x is the natural log of y. x is the natural log of y. Okay, so I rewrite y equals e to the x as x equals ln y. And now that we are sophisticated and we have like this high quality understanding of the Leibniz notation, what I'm now going to tell you to do is to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of x, and I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of ln y. And if two things are equal, then certainly their derivatives are equal, right? So that's like legit. OK. One of these is easy. What is the derivative with respect to x of x? 1. What is the derivative with respect to x of ln y? OK. This is kind of tricky, right? This is tricky because, OK, so first of all, what is the derivative with respect to z? of ln z. One over z. It would just be 1 over z, right? If you're answering, well, if you're answering that question, it means that you just understand what the derivative rule is. Um, so, but here, I'm not asking for the derivative with respect to x. Uh, I'm now I'm differentiating with respect to a different variable. So this gets kind of weird, right? Because, in fact, y is a function of x. Okay, so this is the move that you're either going to like it or you're going to not like it, but eventually you're going to like it. So uh, it's like this. If I want to differentiate uh, ln y with respect to x, I think of y as containing an entire function of x. So this is really like the derivative of the ln of something. And what is the derivative of the ln of something? Well, okay, but before we get to that, in general, the derivative of ln of something is one over that something. One over the something times back inside for the derivative of the something. And the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. Right? Right? Because after all, 
if I asked you for the derivative with respect to x of the ln of like sine, for example, what would you tell me that the answer was? You would tell me that the answer was the derivative of ln of something is 1 over the something back inside for the derivative of the something, which would be cosine. Did you guys see the parallels here? Now I'm just keeping y abstract. y is just some function of x. The derivative of ln something is 1 over the something back inside for the derivative of the something. All right, and now recall that the whole goal was to figure out what dy dx was, right? So what is dy dx? dy dx is actually just y. And what's y? Whoa. That is a proof that the derivative is e to the x. All right. It, OK, how do you feel about that? My experience is that people are slightly skeptical of this over the years. So I'm going to, yes? I don't remember. Did we use e to the x in our proof? We used the definition of e, but not the derivative of e. Yeah. Um, so there's another way of doing this, which is possibly slightly cooler. Let's figure remember how. Um, we say. Could theoretically just substitute in the derivative ln of, uh, ln of y with a, with a natural log of e to the x and just not simplify that? Yeah, that's what I think that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to say, all right, what is the derivative of the ln of e to the x? I think, is this what I'm doing? Yeah, I think this is what I'm doing, right? So what is the derivative of ln of e to the x? Well, first of all, what is ln of e to the x? Wait. E. X. 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 By the definition of e and ln being inverse functions. So this is really like saying, what's the derivative of x? And the answer is 1. Are you doing this right? Yeah, no, no, you're doing this right. OK. And then on the other hand, what's the derivative of ln of e to the x? Well, now using the chain rule, oh, I hope this is working out. I think this is working out, right? That according to the chain rule, the derivative of ln of something is 1 over the something times the derivative of the something, whatever that is. In other words, 1 equals 1 over e to the x times the derivative of e to the x, whatever that is. Well, the answer is, yep, or equals e to the x. This is actually, if you inspect this logically and compare it and contrast it with this, you will find that it's the exact same thing. The only thing I'm doing here is I'm sort of temporarily naming this variable y in order that I can proceed sort of linearly, but otherwise it's the exact same thing. All right, um, is that like pretty much the period, or do I have time for one more thing? That's the period. That's the period? That's the period. Yeah. All right, that is it. I feel like we were going to get more done, but I think what we did, we did really well. And the chain rule is really, really important. You need to master it. So it's giving you a lot of homework, which is just tons and tons and tons of chain rule problems, practicing your derivatives, Learning all kinds of exciting things, um, doing the simplification. How do we feel? Good? All right, that was lecture, I can't remember now, I'm losing track. 12, 13, something. This was 12? I think this is lecture 12. Yep. All right, bye. Hit you off.